Welcome back, DB2 chapter 10, more indexing business. Okay, so if you look back at all the videos that you've seen in this chapter, and maybe even in the previous chapter where any indexing has been, uh, has been discussed, I think we have almost always created indexes on numeric columns. But of course, there's other data types around. And uh, well, one prominent data type, one prevalent data type in uh, database systems and applications of database systems are, of course, textual data, so strings or text columns. And uh, those data types, of course, come with a different type of predicate that we would like to support. So a large pointer here. Okay, so um, that would be the type of predicate that would be useful and probably very common in textual data, uh, pattern matching. Yeah? Uh, string patterns like this are uh, close to what you may know from regular expressions. Uh, SQL implements a form of string pattern matching that is a form of restricted regular expressions. Of course, we can also perform full regular expression matching in uh, modern SQL systems, but the SQL language itself built, built Built in, it comes with a, a simple but uh, very useful string pattern matching mechanism. So uh, inside these strings, you will find wild cards like this percent sign. All right, there are other work wild cards, but let's focus on this percent sign for this brief video on indexing support for string pattern matching. Okay. And indeed, there is indexing support and very efficient indexing support for such string pattern matching, but it depends. As always in life, it depends on the pattern in this particular case. It depends on how the pattern looks like, whether indexes can indeed help us. And we will see that PostgreSQL has knowledge built in about the semantics of these patterns and can translate these patterns into either selective index scanning conditions or not. Okay, so let's explore this in this video. Okay, so just to remind you, what's the semantics of this wildcard, of this percent wildcard? Well, uh, if you find it in a pattern string like this, so at this particular position, all right, then the percent sign uh, represents any arbitrary substring between the two strings S1 and S2. All right, so it, it represents any arbitrary substring. It could be a substring of arbitrary lengths, including zero characters. Okay, so if you would express that using the white known Unix-based regular expression syntax, then you would end up with an expression that looks like this. Okay, a prefix of string as one, uh, then a suffix of string as two, and between these, arbitrary characters, this is the semantics of the dot here, but uh, arbitrarily many of these, so maybe zero arbitrary characters, maybe one, maybe two, maybe 1,000, uh, this construct would emit all of these situations, and it's exactly the same with a person sign in the SQL pattern matches. Okay. Right, so how we would, would we uh, construct an index that supports such pattern matches? Well, of course, we would need a table T, underlying base table T, that has a string column. So let's see, uh, C would be the textual column that we want to index. When we, well, we could, of course, build B tree indexes, ordered indexes over such a column using the normal create index syntax. And uh, if you use that syntax that we've seen so many times already when we were supporting numeric columns, if you would use this syntax, then indeed this index, the created B plus plus two index would support the usual comparison operators like equality and all these range comparisons. If you would like a particular index that supports such pattern matches, then you would need a different create index DDL statement in PostgreSQL. Uh, you see that there is this suffix here in the index creation statement. This is something that is specific to PostgreSQL. Probably other database systems will have uh, modifiers in, the create, in their create index statements that's, that uh, signal, hey, this particular B tree is supposed to support pattern matching. Okay. So this is this particular type of B tree that we will create for our experiments, of course, because we want to 
support percent based pattern matching. Okay, so if we look at the innards, if we look at the internals of such a B plus tree, then how would the column that it indexes be organized internally? How would the sequence set, how would the sequence set of the resulting B plus tree look like? Okay, so if this is the index column, then of course we won't find integers in the sequence set. What we will find are textual string keys, of course, um, Attached, we would find RIDs that point to the particular rows in the uh, in the heap file. That's a different business here, but these are the string keys that we would find in the sequence set. And of course, that would be the index order. Uh, the string keys would be in ascending order, just like in a numeric B plus tree. Okay, so uh, that would be strings in ascending order, I guess. Yeah, if you can, if you look at these strings, they look similar largely, but they are in lexicographic ascending order. Okay, so we start with these A's here, X, Y, Z. So only the X, Y, Z discerns the three strings here, and they are, of course, in X, Y, Z order. This string is next in the order because it starts with A, B. So all the strings that start with A, B, actually, they assemble here at the beginning. Uh, uh, with AB in the beginning, they assemble here in this cluster of uh, entries in the sequence set and so on and so on. And of course, ZZ top would be at the very end of this sequence set. Okay, so this is the order in the sequence set. So now let's uh, think over for a minute what it means to support such a predicate here with the, such a B plus tree and the order in the sequence set we've just seen. Well, if we are looking for arbitrary strings that end in a Z, that would be the semantics of this particular pattern, arbitrary strings that end in a Z, then these strings could, of course, be found anywhere, all over the sequence set. Uh, the order, lexicographic ordering of the sequence set will not help at all in this particular case. We would find here a match, we would find a match there, all over the file, we would probably find matches. We would have to scan the entire sequence set to find all the matches. And we've seen the reaction of the database system in such situations already. If the entire index sequence set is to be uh, scanned anyway, and we have to fo follow read pointers from anywhere in the sequence set into the underlying file, then it's best to just drop the index and simply perform a sequential scan. And we will see that PostgreSQL does exactly that. All right. So suffix space queries, textual pattern queries are uh, receive no index support with these um, text pattern indexes. It looks different already if we are looking for prefixes. So we are looking for particular prefix. This is a short prefix just containing the letter A and we don't care for the, uh, oh, let me add an apostrophe here, it's missing. Okay, and we don't add f and uh, care for the contents of the suffix of the string. That's better already because we can now use the indexing order, the sequence set order, to narrow down on a particular scan range. In this case, it's all the strings starting with A, and this is this particular scan range. And that might be better already. That might be better already than performing a sequential scan. Okay, so this would be. Uh, potentially large number of, uh, of matches that we find inside this scan range and a potentially high number of uh, reads that we have to dereference into pages. Probably many hits on, on the same page. All of these uh, rows will probably live on the same page. Uh, so what we will see in the database system do is uh, to try to perform deduplication regarding the pages the writs and the pages that it has to access. And uh, well, this is a job for bitmap index scan, and this is exactly what we will see here. So if the index scan ran range is wide, and we have to expect a large number of writ references, many of these hitting the same pages, then the system will probably perform in bitmap index scan. But we could already define a scan range here. Things get better for us, if the index scan range gets narrow, of course, this is always our goal, to have a very narrow index scan range, to dereference a tiny number of reads 
and do a very efficient localized, very, very particular access into the underlying heap file. And this will be the case once the prefix that we have fixed here in the pattern gets longer and thus more specific. We would like to see all strings with this particular prefix and only then we don't care for the suffix. And this indeed defines a narrower scan range. So starting with ABC, this is exactly these rows in the sequence set. And this is a rather narrow scan range. You see that I've indicated it here. Uh, it contains few rows, few RRDs, few RIDs have to be dereferenced. And uh, well, this is a job for the regular index scan. Probably it's a waste of time to perform a deduplication of uh, page accesses here. And we could just have a plain index scan. That would probably be the most efficient method to evaluate this pattern match predicate. Okay, let's see whether we can find this over uh, on the PostgreSQL side of things. Uh, you can see that, uh, you will see that PostgreSQL is rather clever in uh, compiling or turning such pattern based uh, matches, string matches, into range conditions because that's what we need when we want to apply index support. Okay, so what I've done here uh, is uh, I've created another another index on our on our indexed table, in this case on the textual column B, and you see that I've indeed in opted for a B plus tree that can support pattern matching. All right, then I've done the analysis and the resulting indexed table and its indices looks like this. We still have the two individual indices on uh, columns A and C uh, from our further, uh, from the previous um, experiments in the previous video. They will be of no importance here. This is the index that we are banking on in this experiment. Okay, perfect. So just to, uh, to remind us of the contents of the textual column B, and the order in which the sequence set of the constructed B tree indexed underscore B B tree is now uh, organized. Let's see. Okay, okay. So this is the, the prefix, the first entries that we would find in the sequence set of that newly constructed B plus tree. And you can see this is lexicographic ordering, lexicographic ordering for all the entries. So we start with all zeros here and then all zeros in such clusters here. Oh, okay, so this is lexicographic ordering. Of course, rows with, I don't know, with any particular suffix are to be found anywhere. So suffix D is found here, suffix D is found here, a suffix D would be found somewhere else, anywhere in the sequence set. Uh, that's really a tough time for an index to support such suffix based patterns. And as we will see, Postgre will just not use the index. Here is such a suffix based pattern. So look for any strings in the B column that end with 42. We don't care for the prefix, we just care for the suffix. And this is something that we won't be able to support with the pattern based index. And this is exactly what we see here. Let's evaluate that takes its time and indeed a sequential scan is being performed. And the sequential scan of course uh, has a filter that implements, so an, an interpreted predicate that implements this like operator. You see that uh, in these plants the like operator is abbreviated with these tilde based uh, operators which is just the abbreviation or uh, alternative notation for the like operator. Okay. So this is suffix based patterns. Okay. So the situation should already be better if we are using such patterns that are somewhat specific regarding the prefix. Okay. So there is an A prefix and something arbitrary in the middle and then a 42 suffix. We probably cannot use the 42 suffix in index scanning, but this, the, the fixed uh, prefix should indeed help us. So let's see how the plan looks like now. Okay, evasion already faster. Indeed, we find that uh, the index is used. The index, the B tree over the textual column has been used. 
And uh, because this is a predicate of medium selectivity, there will be quite a number of rows, quite a number of rows that qualify regarding uh, this predicate. Uh, the system will use a bitmap index scan because it expects many hits, many hits to be on the same pages. And of course, we want to access these pages, pages only once. All right, so let's see what the index condition then. Well, yes, okay, so indeed, the index condition only refers to the prefix of our pattern match string. You see that we are looking for strings that uh, have an A or any value larger than an A and any larger less than a B, okay? So this is exactly an uh, index scan condition that indeed identifies all the strings that start with A. Okay, so that's a, that's a, the, the, start condition and this is the stop condition if you think about it these are exactly all the strings that start with a okay so these are of course particular uh, uh, versions of the string comparison operators that um, disregard any suffix in these in these match strings okay so we are really only looking at the prefixes that have been specified here and we are looking for prefixes between A and A. So just for A prefixes. Okay. Well, this of course does not implement the entire semantics of the pattern matched predicate. We still are missing the match for the 42 predicate. But as you can see, if this bitmap index scan then passes on its bitmap on to the bitmap heap scan, there we have it then that bitmap peep scan will do the rest of the work uh, and uh, perform the pattern match regarding the suffix. The bitmap peep scan can be sure that all entries that it receives will indeed have the desired prefix and all that's left here in this if interpreted predicate is to perform the suffix matching. Okay. So the job of the pattern matching has been split into a particular index range condition and into post-processing that cares about the string suffix. All right, and now the last situation where we are even more specific about the prefix. Three characters are fixed, way less strings, way less strings in our input will be able to qualify here. Uh, we will be left with a small number of reads that we have to dereference. And I think uh, this should be picky and selective enough that PostgreSQL considers a regular index scan, not a bitmap index scan. Oh yeah, that was quick. Okay, so indeed we are just performing an index scan here. And of course such an index scan, like any index scan, needs an indexing condition. And this is the index condition that we are using. All right, so we are looking for strings that start with ABC or anything larger than ABC and less than ABD. All right, okay. So if you think about this again, this is all the strings that would start with ABC. Okay, we're disregarding any suffix uh, characters because we're using these special uh, tilde-based comparison operators built into PostgreSQL. You can also use these uh, at the surface user SQL language level, for example, just as a side note. Okay, and then only to implement the residual semantics of the pattern match, to implement the suffix match patching here, uh, matching here, we then have an interpreted filter that is performed while we perform the index scan. But this is the indexing condition that leads to a rather narrow indexing scan range. Okay, only 250 pages are hit there in the sequence set. Okay, and that's, of course, the most selective query with the best evaluation time. All right, so indeed, string pattern matches can be supported by B plus trees, but, well, the string patterns have to be good natured. They have to be prefix based in a sense. Once we are looking for suffixes only, we are left to our own devices. This means left to sequential scan. So much for that. One more check mark in our indexing discussion. More stuff ahead. Uh, stay tuned if you will, if you like. Uh, see you in a few minutes.